this is the fourth and the, and the last a, uh, video on the scientific revolution as part of Harari Sapiens book. And this one's going to focus on the last two items, the one happiness and the other is the end of sapiens themselves. All right, and let's start with happiness. One of the things that, that Harari says, he challenges that our progress and increase in wealth have successfully converted into an increase in happiness. While there are more of us, so our DNA and empire may be happy, and we have more things, so capitalism may be happy, and we have more knowledge, so science is happy, he doesn't believe that we are happy as sapiens because we are still anxious, fearful, dangerous, and intolerant. Hardly a recipe for happiness. If you remember in our first video, we talked about how a uh, sapiens made it to the top of the food chain too quickly. So they brought their anxieties and their fear with them. And, and that has translated into a challenge for sapiens to become happy. One of the other things Harari points out is that criteria for happiness is ever-changing. It's very ephemeral. I mean, a, uh, it's more like a spiral. It just keeps changing and changing and changing. And on top of that, it appears that often the changes have to increase in intensity. So that this is what we see sometimes with, with addictions and stuff like that, where it has to keep getting, uh, the drugs have to get stronger and stronger in order for the person to, to, to experience the same level of biological happiness that they experienced before. And sometimes just change itself is the criteria for happiness. So something that we may have considered uh, an unhappy experience, if, it's, if, if we're in this experience that is, a, uh, I would call it like sugar happiness, it, we, we just changing to something that is not that sugar happiness again, may, may be is a criteria for us to all of a sudden feel happy because it's just the change itself. So, so there's, there's no objective criteria that we're able to establish that says a, uh, if we hit this objective criteria, we will be a happy species. And so it appears that happiness is totally subjective. Now, meanwhile, as we've learned in earlier videos, it is the inner subjective myths that are the foundation of our cultural advantage. So even with drugs that might produce biological happiness of a specific individual, it still appears to leave open the question of species happiness. Then he talks about the end of sapiens. And he talks about basically, the, the, he sees the replacement of natural selection by intelligent design. And he sees that it could happen in any of three ways. One is biological engineering, where we where we, we take either designer babies or we play around with the DNA of people who are already here and in, in, in hopes of creating a biological superman or superperson. Then he also talks about the second one is cyborg engineering, where we, where we basically are augmenting our biology with our technologies. And, and we see, of course, I mean, even something as, as simple as glasses is, a, is, a, is a engineering, a cyborg engineering. And uh, we can see how we, all the people being networked together, uh, you know, if you think everybody has the capability to, to be connected to something like Google, um, then everybody has equal knowledge about everything that Google has knowledge about. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a way that he sees that, that, that he believes that one of the other three ways that we're, that we're heading towards. And the last one is the actual engineering of inorganic life. And, and this is not where basically what we call a, uh, like, a like Data, the character in, 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 a, uh, in, in Star Trek, where um, where basically it's it looks like a artificial person, instead it's actually a reconnection of, of inorganic life, and so it's a, a network of and and it's where you theoretically would be uploading your uh, your brain or whatever into a uh, into an inorganic silicon or or some other kind of material that that ultimately would a uh, would would be the future. So those are our three things that he thinks are ways that it could happen. But the point behind the whole thing is that he also sees that this brings about even just the, the not once we hit any one of those three or all of those three, but just in the process of heading towards those three, he sees that the end of our current set of myths, the end of the myth of romanticism, capitalism, humanism, 
nationalism, consumerism, the idea that we need variety, and scientism. He sees it basically that our, the, the 21st century is going to bring those myths to an end. And that's kind of the end.